low-budget program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. All cars, attention all Huntington Beach cars, broadcast 149. Investigate a man attempting to halt cars on Ocean Highway at East City Limits. The man is reported covered with blood and waving a red lantern. East City Limits and Ocean Highway. That's all. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just had a remarkable experience. I have just returned from a trip to the only Sinclair cracking plant in the West, owned by the Rio Grande Oil Company. And now I know the secret of the success of Rio Grande cracked gasoline. You have wondered, and frankly so have I, why this one brand continues to be specified exclusively year after year in the many cities and counties where it is sold to power more police, fire, and emergency cars than any other brand. If you could only see the wonderful, mysterious, and complicated Rio Grande cracking plant as I have just seen it, you would realize why cracked gasoline is so superior to other brands. In this large refinery, gasoline is made by the same processes used to make other gasoline. Then it goes through the extra, additional cracking process, passing through miles of pipes and stills and fractionating towers that cover acres of ground and cost millions of dollars. Rio Grande takes gasoline when it is in the state of refinement that other companies consider ready for market and pass it through these costly extra steps to make a truly super gasoline. There is no other refinery in the West licensed to crack gasoline but the Sinclair process. Rio Grande has the exclusive patent rights. And when the gasoline has been broken up into infinitesimal atoms under terrific pressure, then it is blended until the perfect balance is achieved for quick starting, for speed and acceleration, and for unlimited power. There's as much difference between ordinary gasoline and Rio Grande cracked as there is between black and white. I have seen tests which prove almost unbelievable differences. And yet, to this almost perfect product, Rio Grande adds tetraethyl to create even more power, to prevent engine overheating, and to give you the thrill of police car performance at no extra cost to you. Now it is our pleasure to present Chief H.L. Grant of the Huntington Beach Police Department. Chief Grant. Yeah, the case you are about to hear is one of the most incredible in the history of Orange County peace officials. There are times when the desire to live becomes so strong that human beings enact feats of strength and live in, in spite of terrible torture that should by all rights kill an ordinary mortal. The story of Angelo Franny is such a case. At the diabolical plot hatched by his so-called pals worked out as planned... We of the police department might have had a pretty difficult time in trying to break their stories. But as you will hear, it didn't. In closing, I'd like to add just a word of advice to the criminal who thinks he can break the law and get away with it. Now, you may think you've got an airtight alibi. You may feel pretty smart about your superiority to the other fellow. But the odds are all on our side, and in the long run, you'll find yourself on the bottom of the pile. Now, think it over. March 25th, 1930, Huntington Beach, California. The damp sea fog has caught the tips of the spindly oil derricks along the coast highway and swathed their skeletons in nebulous clothing. Ghosts, indeed, they appear in the flashing lights of the passing automobiles, crawling through the clammy night. In one of these cars, a maroon Chrysler Roadster, are three conspirators, Angelo Freney, Tex Wallace, and Harry Moran. Oh, now, listen, you guys. If we're a monkey with his bank job, we're going to have a long stay in the morgue. Pipe down, Fanny. Pull off the highway here to the right. Yeah, stop right alongside that fence and put your lights out. We're going up to a friend of mine a couple of blocks from here to get a shovel to dig up the soup in that kit bag we buried. You sit right here till we get back. And just to make sure you don't take a powder on us, I'll take this ignition key with me. Come on, Harry. Okay. Tex, you'd have better give my rod bucket to me. I, I might need it. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Duck under this fence, Harry. I'll hold the wire up for you. Of course, it's locked and go in the back way. He knows we're coming. Here you are. Mm. 
There's him. Careful. All right, now, hold it up for me. That bird's got a stool on us, Tex. You telling me? He sure tipped his mitt tonight. He's so yellow, if you stuck him with a knife, he'd bleed lemon juice. We'd better deal with him out and let's go back to Long Beach. Yeah? He'd take his little go-kart with him, and where'd we be for a getaway wagon? Get him to lend us the car till the job's pulled. He wouldn't hold still for that. He knows we're set to blow east. He knows, and we know. He'd be kissing his buggy goodbye if he fell for that. Besides, he'd have it on us and squawk for a cut. Well, well what do we do then? Ain't guessing so good tonight, are you, Harry? When we go back to the beach, instead of going to the plant... We'll go to the city dump at the edge of town. Let him do the digging, and when he gets busy, pour the poison. Something you mean? Why not? Well, the job ain't worth it. Hmm. The night breeze chilling you two? No, Tex, but I ain't... Save never... it. I'm referee in this go tonight, and I'm making my own rules. Now, that's Fang. We're downwind of him. He'll be all right when he gets our scent. Well, here comes Jim with a lantern. Don't talk no more than you have to. Yeah, who is it? Tex! Thought we'd drift in the back way. It's handier. Oh, hello. Howdy, Harry. Hello, Jim. How's tricks? We come to get the shovel to dig those clams I was telling you about. Oh, yeah. yeah it's right in the shed. I'll get it for you. Well, Fang, old fella. Still my friend, huh? <coughs> nice dog, Harry. Yeah. If he likes you. Yeah, here you are, Tex. Okay, Jim. If we have any luck with the clams, we might drop by and give you some. Let's get going, Harry. Well, good luck. I'll be looking for you. So long, Jim. Come on, Fang. It's time for you to be changed up. Right, guy, Jim. If the catch is good, we'll mail him a C-note. Listen, Tex. I think we'd better try to talk friendly into going through with this job. Three men are better than two, I think. Yeah? Well, I'm doing the saying, and the melon will be sweeter if it's cut only two ways. And the wrap will be a lot heavier if we put them away. What wrap? They can't wrap you till you lose, and we ain't losing. With Franny in the clear, there won't be no one to report his car stolen and him missing. So who's going to put the finger on us? Well, about his wife. Hmm. She's in a jam herself. Besides, she don't see or hear from him for weeks at a time. Well, uh, maybe you're right. Of course I'm right. You know me well enough to know that I do things without... Well, I use my noodle. I've cased this always, and I tell you, it's all silk. Our game is. Now, are you game? Well, I'm as game as you are, Tex, but I ain't anxious to swing. The hemp ain't been spun that'll swing me. Now, here's a lay. When we get back to the car, just act like it's all been set for the three of us to go through with the job. If he beefs about it, just let me do the talking. Well, we'll tell him the stuff's buried out of the city dump, and when we get there, I'll tell you to change that rear tire that's down a little while Fanny does the digging. Yeah? Yeah. When he gets busy with the shovel, we'll give him all we've got with that heavy jack. We'll plant him close to where the dump's burning, and in 24 hours, there won't be enough left of Mr. Fanny to establish the corpus electi. Got it? Yeah, I got it. I'm kind of a star in this show, ain't I? Hmm. You weakening? No. Nah. Let's go. Right. Watch the barbed wire. <coughs> Watch yourself, Sam. Hey, what are you fellows go for all this show, eh? On the hind? What's the matter, Franny? Getting tired waiting? I'm a get glad the cold sit here in this dump of fog. Well, you had to warm her up. Why don't you take a shot? No, I did. I take a two, three. Hmm. I'll say you did. You darn near killed it. Well, not. There's plenty more in the side of the pocket. Sure. Better get it, Harry. I can kill this myself. Okay. Find it, Harry? Yeah. All right. Get going, Fanny. Back to hunting beef. Well, here's success to the job. You better drink of that, too, Fanny. You're playing a part in it. I don't play nothing. I'm going to go with you if you say so, but I, I don't like it. I've got to feel something going to happen. <laughs> Fanny, you never know how psychic you are. Here's how. Back through the fog, the roadster creeps to Huntington Beach. At the eastern limits of the city, Wallace directs Frenny over the truck road to the huge refuse pile known as the city dump. All right, Frenny, down the lights and pull up close to where she's burning there. That's good. Kill your motor and we'll get busy. There. Give us that shovel. Harry, you better change that right rear tire. Got a slow leak, and we might go flat on it about the time we need it most. Okay. Here you are. Right. Now, you start the digging, Franny. Stuff's planted plenty deep. I'll spell you when you get tired. Where is it? It's a place. Right here where my toe is, see? It's a funny place at the plant of soup. How you coming, Harry? Just starting. Shall I change it now? Yes, now. Oh, oh. 
Yeah, that ought to hold him for a while. Give me a hand to roll him over close to fire, and we'll cover him up with the stuff of the bird. Wait till I chuck this jack in the car. We might need a later for that tire. We better frisk him first. He might be holding something worthwhile. Ain't a bad idea. Hmm. Here's his wallet. Got dough in it, too. Here's his operator's license. I'll just keep that. Might come in handy, seeing I ain't got none. Well, that's all but a couple of letters written in Italian. Well, get him over there. I'll chuck a few shovelfuls of ashes over him first to get him out of sight. Right. And here's an old bed spring that'll keep anyone from stepping on him in case the fire don't burn over this far by daylight. And just to make it a good job, let's heave the body of this old touring car over the whole business. That's it. Oh, There, now. There. That's what I call an artistic bit of work. Poor old Fanny. And he had a feeling something was going to happen. Come on, Harry. Let's scram. Where now? Oh, we'll roll up the highway a ways. What are you winking the headlights for? I ain't. They're doing it themselves. Must be a bum connection. I'll pull off into this side street and see if I can fix them. Wonder if there's a pair of pliers in this bunch of tools. Yeah, here's a pair. Say, this black jack has blood on it. We better ditch it. I'll chuck it out there in the weeds. No, not the hot. Might be found. Get that old blanket in the back of the seat. Pick up some rocks and we'll put the jack and Fendi's gun in the rocks and the blanket and toss the bundle in the bay. And I'm landing. I'll see if I can find out what's on haywire with these lights. Looks to me as though the wire's loose here under the dashboard. What's the idea of dumping the gun in the drink? We might need it. I never carry one, Henry. It's a bum beef if we're ever picked up. They find a gat on you. I just borrowed his gun for tonight so we wouldn't have no A's in the hole. He knows I never tote one. Harry, get back in the car. Some guys are walking over this way. Okay, well, let's pick this stuff up. Oh, leave it and get in here. Having trouble with your legs? Yeah, a loose connection somewhere, I guess. Which way are you headed? Oh, going back to Los Angeles. There, I guess that's got it. Fixed okay. They're burning steady now. Yeah, they seem to be all right. Everything else okay? I think so. Well, guess we'll be rolling along. Good night. Good night. You know, there's something phony about that guy. He's pretty nosy. And he's got copper written all over him. What about the bundle? You're going to leave it there? We are not. We'll stall around a while and then go back with the lights out and pick it up. That's it, Mr. Nosy. Don't beat us to it. A few hours later, through the swirling tentacles of fog along the coast highway just outside of Huntington Beach, a woman, her thin hands clutching the steering wheel of her car, fights off the feeling of gloom and loneliness, strains her eyes ahead to see the winding road. The twin beams from her headlights create crazy patterns in the fog. Magnify the eeriness of the night to a nerve-breaking tension. Then, suddenly, directly in front of the car, an indistinct shape looms. Fear, clutching with cold hands at her throat. The woman sits, staring at the something that crawls slowly towards the car. Then, opening the door, she steps down. Looks into a blood-smeared, pain-racked face. Please, help me. Please. Help me. I don't hurt you, none. You just help me. All right, I, I will. I've got to. I'll, I'll try and help you in the back of the car. Oh, 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 Fighting her fear, the woman drives her pathetic human cargo into Huntington Beach, pulls up to a stop in front of the first men she sees on the street. Could you tell me where I could find a hospital or a police station? Uh, sure, ma'am. It's no, right along no, down no, the no, street here. Station. Huh? I don't want the police station. Hey, what's up here? Someone hurt? I, I found this man crawling in the road back there. He's got blood all over him. And 
I don't know what to do. Hey, Mac, give me a hand, yeah. This guy badly hurt, yeah? No, I, I'm all right. Don't worry about me. I'm, I'm all right. Uh, I'm sure all you're all right, right, buddy. You're all right, but you're going for a ride in an ambulance just the same. <laughs> now, come on, Mac, post him. No, I'm Is all someone right. calling the ambulance? Yeah, I'll call one, and I'm going to call the law, too. This looks funny to me. Wait a minute. This looks like a squad car coming. Yeah, I do. Stop. Get him over here. Hey, officer. Officer. Yeah, it's Parker and Earl Schaefer. What's all the trouble here? Hey, I was just going to call you, boys. You know, this woman drove up and she asked me where a hospital was, and I was just oh, going to tell oh, her... Oh, all right. right. Now, now, yeah. now, suppose we let the lady tell me. Now, what's it all about, ma'am? I'm Mrs. Withers, officer. I was coming home from Balboa tonight, and all of a sudden I saw this man crawling along the road. I got out and looked and saw he was hurt, so I brought him here. You don't know what happened to him? No, sir. I hadn't even stopped to think about that. I was so frightened. Mm, I don't blame you. It's not a very pretty sight. What hit you, young fella? No, take me to the hospital. I don't want to go to the hospital. All right, that's all right, buddy. Take it easy. Did the car hit you? No, not the car. They beat me. They they tried to kill me. But uh, but I'm all right. I'm all right. All right. Did anybody call an ambulance? You know, I was just going to went. Yeah, but you didn't, huh? You didn't. Uh, Better call in for the wagon, Schaefer. This boy's in a bad way. Shortly after reaching the hospital, Angelo Franey, questioned, unfolds a story so weird and fantastic that the officers find difficulty in believing him. They rush to headquarters, however, with the license number and complete description of the roadster in its occupants. While phones, radio, and teletypes send forth their call for the wanted men, Parker and Schaefer search vainly through the city streets and along the ocean front for the maroon-colored Chrysler. Looks like a hopeless case, A.J. Just three miles from here by this time. You know, Earl, if that Italian's telling the truth, I believe we saw that car tonight. And, uh, remember when I called your attention to a car out on the dump when we were cruising along the ocean here? Yeah, and I thought it was some of the boys shooting rats. Well, as long as we're down this way, let's roll over there and look things over. Right. There are a lot of things that don't click with me. Now, if robbery was the sole motive for the stick-up, why did they cave in his skull? Instead, they had his gun. It might have been gang work. Maybe his number was up. Maybe, but it doesn't seem humanly possible. Doc said his skull was fractured in three places. Must be a good 300 yards from down there at that dump heap to the highway, and he dragged himself all that distance and then had presence of mind enough to take a red lantern off a construction job to flag a car with. Well, I don't put much stock in the buried alive part of the story, but it won't do any harm to check up a little. Visiting the city dump, officers Parker and Schaefer find sufficient evidence to corroborate Franey's story. Reporting back to headquarters, they learn that Franey, Wallace, and Moran are wanted in Long Beach for a series of crimes, including forgery and burglary. While every available officer and some of the citizenry engage in a frantic search for the hot roadster, the object of their search, with headlights out, gropes quietly along Lake Street and Huntington Beach, peeping for the spot where the bundle has been left in the weeds. Hold it, Tex. This is the place. Find it? Yeah, I got it. That lovely quiz us about the lights is standing just across the street. Now, kick on your lights and step on it. Let's get out of here. Don't get panicky, something. Easy does it the best. He can't really be wise to nothing. So we'll just drift along easy like and head for Costa Mesa. It was Jack Tinsley, former police chief, who stood across the street while the bundle was retrieved. His suspicions now thoroughly aroused, he hurries at once to headquarters, where he finds Earl Schaefer pacing the floor impatiently, awaiting the return of his partner. Hi, Earl. What's on your mind? Uh, plenty. What's on yours? Oh, maybe nothing. Just got kind of puzzled over the actions of a Chrysler Roadster that's made a couple of trips out my way tonight. What kind of a car? Say that again. A maroon Chrysler Roadster, California, 3X2914. Why, is it hot? Is it hot, man? It's red hot. Where'd you see it last and when? Just saw it out on Lake Street. Headed towards 17th. What have we got to ride in? Parker's got our car. Mine's outside. Well, come on. I'll tell you all about it on the way. How many were there in the car when you saw them? Two. I talked with them when they were fixing their lights, when they were out the first time. They came back later and picked up something they had planted in the weeds. What'd they look like? Couldn't see much in the dark. One of them was quite tall and had a decided Texas draw. Those are the babies, all right. They beat a guy over the head with an auto jack and buried him in the ashes down at the city dump a while ago. Hey, there's a tail light ahead. Slow down a little. Might be them. Yeah. It's a roadster, all right. Yeah. And it's the roadster. 3X2914. Yeah. Well, cover him with your gat and I'll pull him off to the side of the road. Right. 
All right, pull over, boys. We want to talk to you. All right, you two. Get up. Keep your hands up. Keep them covered, Jack, while I see if they're healed. What is this, a shakedown? Well, there's no guns on either of them, Jack. Well, here comes Parker. Oh, you got it, eh? Hey? Good work. Hey, Jay, I want you to meet a couple of friends of mine, Tex Wallace and Harry Moran. Gentlemen, I sure am pleased to meet you. Say, what's the gag? If you birds ain't playing a practical joke, it sure is a case of mistaken identity. So we'll discuss that at headquarters. Arriving at headquarters, the men are booked for car theft and nothing is said of the attempted murder. Wallace, upon whom Franey's wallet is found, gives the name of Angelo Franey and claims ownership of the car. Moran remains sullenly noncommittal and they are locked up in separate cells. The roadster is brought to the station and searched, and a mysterious blanket bundle is found to contain a blood-smeared auto jack, Franey's gun, and several heavy stones. Wallace is brought into the office for questioning. So your name's Angelo Franey, huh? Yeah. What of it? That's an Italian name, isn't it? Yes, it is. My old man was not Italian. Where'd you get that southern drawl? In Italy? Hmph. That's easy. I was born in this country and spent some time in Texas. Maybe did a little time in Texas, too, huh? Why is Kraken ain't gonna get you birds no place with me? I'm answering your questions, ain't I? Yeah, in your own way. This your pocketbook? Yeah, that's mine. And this is your driver's license, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. This description says black hair. Used to be black. Been fading out a bit lately. And the height is given as five feet six inches. You're over six feet. How come? Well, I guess I must have grown some since that was made out. Ah, come on, Wallace. This is all bunk. Come clean. This is your show, and you birds will have to do your own cleaning. You stop me on the public highway and accuse me of stealing my own car. I'm just asking you to prove it. Well, we'll prove it all right. And some other things, too. How about that buddy Jack and the gun found in your car? No mystery there, either. I ran over a dog on the highway yesterday and crippled him up pretty bad. Didn't want to drive away and leave him to suffer, so I put him out with that Jack. I found the gun on the pike last night in Long Beach. I ain't got no use for a gun. Don't like to tote them around. The jack was on the bum anyway, so I thought I'd get rid of both of them. That's a mighty flimsy alibi, Wallace. If you own that car, where's your pink slip? Pink slip? Yeah, the certificate of ownership. Oh, that's put away for safekeeping. Why don't you dig it up? It's the easiest way to prove that you own the car. I don't have to prove that I own it. It's up to you birds to prove that I don't. And that won't be so easy. I'll get me a mouthpiece in the morning and spring this joint with a writ of habeas corpus. Now, if you're through with the questioning, I'll get back to bed. Oh, all right. You can go back to bed. Lock them up, though. You'll never make a car theft charge stick against me. Well, if a certain patient in a hospital should happen to die, the charge will be more serious. Huh? What do you mean by that? Oh, nothing. Just a little thought for you to sleep on. Come on. <laughs> The following morning, District Attorney West and Criminal Deputy Stewart arrive from Santa Ana, question the surprisingly healthy Franey, receive a complete description of the murder attempt. With this information in hand, they face prisoner Moran. Moran, there was just one thing that might have given us a bad time convicting you. I say there was, because that one thing has just been removed. Yeah, if you're trying to bluff me into talking with those cracks, save them. We're not trying to bluff you. There's no need of that now. Your crony that you tried to get rid of has just spilled the whole story from beginning to end. And you play quite a part in it. Who do you mean? Angelo Frenny. Ever hear of him? But Ah, you're lying. Frenny couldn't spill anything. Not if you and Wallace had made a good job of him. But unfortunately for you boys, Frenny's in pretty good shape. Able to tell us all about it. Not a very pretty story either. Especially that cute idea of yours of throwing an old automobile body over him just to make sure... I didn't. And then that last touch, you remember? Making sure there was some fire in the air to complete the job? Ah, shut up. I don't want to hear about it. I shouldn't think you would. Oh, yes. And it was you that let him have it with that jack, wasn't it, Moran? You thought it was pretty brave, that, hitting him over the head when he wasn't looking. You felt like a pretty big shot, didn't you? Let up, will you? I don't want to listen anymore. You're going to, Moran. You're going to listen until I finish. Either that or tell me about it yourself. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. Okay, here it is. The whole disagreeable mess wrapped up in a pretty bedtime story for you. You and Wallace drove Frenny in his own car out to that dump heap. You had it all prearranged about when you'd get rid of him. So on a certain word, you raised the jack you had in your hand and smacked it down on Frenny's head. I didn't. You're making all this up. You can't bully me. It's a pretty good story, though, doesn't it, Moran? Stewart and I think it's pretty fine. Yeah, that's right. Shall we go on? All right, we continue. After you hit Frenny, you and Wallace dragged him over to the dump where there was some live fire burning and tossed him in it. 
You felt pretty smart about that because you figured if the beating hadn't finished him, the fire would. And it should have. Yeah, it should have. I can't understand why it didn't. Why, it ain't human for Take a guy... Take this down, Sergeant. I think Moran's ready to talk. It ain't human, but I guess you're right. Me and Wallace did do it. We had to get him out of the way before he stooled on us. He knew too much. How about the details of the attempt at killing Moran? Are they right? Yeah. You get the story straight, all right. Will you sign a confession in full? Why not? A lot of good it would do me to hold out on you now. But if that lousy Frenny hadn't lived, you wouldn't have got me to talk. That's right, Moran. Only if Frenny hadn't lived, you'd be up for murder. Think that one over. <laughs> Faced with Moran's confession, the up-to-now silent Wallace admits his part in the crime and is bound over to Orange County officials to await trial. A few weeks later, two men listen, white-faced, as Judge G.K. Scoville read the returned verdict of guilty. Harry Moran was sentenced to Folsom Penitentiary and Tex Wallace to San Quentin. Angelo Frenny recovered from his injuries and was later turned over to the Los Angeles County officials on the suspicion of forgery. And after a short stay in jail, he was released on probation. Thank you, Chief Grant. Ladies and gentlemen, in the next few days, over half a million motorists will purposely drive into a Rio Grande station to ask for a free copy of the October Calling All Cars News. We want you to have a copy because if you haven't read this unique publication, you've been missing some real thrills. And if there are youngsters in your family, they will be thrilled to read that Rio Grande is giving away complete junior detective outfits. Fourteen valuable gifts, all free. It costs you nothing to drive into the service station in your neighborhood featuring Rio Grande cracked gasoline, and it costs you no more to fill your car up with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Yet it is the same gasoline exactly that is specified by the leading cities and counties of the West to power more police and emergency cars than any other brand. What greater proof can you ask that Rio Grande cracked must be a better gasoline? There's another big buy in your Rio Grande station... Sinclair Motor Oils. All through the country, motorists are changing to Sinclair Oils by the thousands. And since the Rio Grande Oil Company introduced Sinclair Motor Oils to the West, sales have gone up and up and up as motorists discover that now they can get a de-waxed, de-jellied, concentrated pure oil in sealed cans as low as 25 cents a quart. That's a real bargain. You save where? You save money with Sinclair. Huntington Park Police calling all cars, attention all cars. Cancellation broadcast 149. Suspects this case now in custody. And that's all. Frederick Lindsley bidding you good night.